In terms of Australian dudes that you've produced for, yeah, um, I know that you produced on the Hoods Calling album, yeah, which is the one that you know really catapulted them into the next phase of their career. Fuck, that was huge when that dropped. Yeah, man. And I knew you had production credits on the certificate, the posse yeah, joint. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, is that the is that the only song that you have produced for the Hoods? Yeah, and then because with Hunter, because one of his other things he wanted to do was that um, he did the the album, the Canteen album, which is basically all the Australian hip hop heads. And I sent a beat, man. And then that was another beat to do with the Hoods, but that was that for that album. But that's why I was kind of here, maybe like you know, I've always been homies with with the Hoods. So I was, and then every time I come here, I never stay for long enough. Mm. It's like, ah, oh, we should hook up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do, do some, like, you know, let's do some shit. And then it's like, I'm gone. So hopefully, like, hopefully we'll link up this time and do some, do some new jams. Got more skills. Play more instruments. <laughs> got the heat. Yeah, got the now, heat. Now you're ready. Got the Got hate. more ways of burning shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, another big name that you've produced for is Draft. Yes. And he's actually from Perth as well. Yeah. So tell us how you met Draft and how you got producing. High Park on Monday nights. And then, the, I mean, the thing is like, he, I mean, yeah, it's funny because there was a group of dudes who used to sneak in because they weren't fucking 18 yet. So they'd sneak into Heidi's on Monday night. Because High, High Park's actually, it wasn't a club. It was, it was a pub. It was basically this front bar. And that's why it was like cheap, cheap drinks and stuff. And everyone used to go there. So yeah, he kind of, was sneaking in and started hanging out with me and Hans and stuff. And he was really shy, like, and then one day he was like, oh, hey, oh, I've, I've written this rap. Um, and we're like, oh, sick. And then, you know, Hans was like, man, yeah, show us, bro. And, like, he was, like, kind of spat at him. And we're like, whoa, fuck, sick, man. That's fucking killer. And then, and then like, you know, Hunter was like, man, that's fucking so Joe, man, fucking man, you want to rap on? Nah, you're gonna rap on Done Deal. You're gonna rap on. You got to fucking record that on Done Deal. And he was like, oh, you know, like fucking sick. And that, if it wasn't for Hunter, there wouldn't be a draft. There would not be a draft. That's how. That's how influential Hunter is. He's like even for me as well. Like I wouldn't be rapping as much if it wasn't for Hunter because he's got fucking that awesome motivation that makes you. Go, yeah, fuck, I am fucking dope. Fuck, this cunt's fucking, must be fucking dope, man. Yeah, fuck this. <laughs> you know, like, that's, that's wild. It's fucking killer, man, you know? And so you had production credits on Pale Rider and Who Am I? I? Yeah. Then I think at the time, like, he hit me up to do the next record, which was Brothers Grimm. Brothers Grimm. But it wasn't going to be Brothers Grimm at the time. Um, but I was working on this other record with Tomahawk. I was like, oh man, I want to do it, but I've got to, I'm just started this one. I've got to fucking, I've got to fucking get it out of the way. But then he, like, he didn't, hooked up with T and then did Brothers Grimm. And it was like, I was like, oh, fuck. Because <laughs> that's the one that really got him popping. Yeah. Because that Cause had, Jimmy um... it dropped Jimmy a card. I remember him showing me that tune. It's, this, this is how I fucking don't know what the fucking, I'm fucking on about. He shows me this track, man, I think I've written a fucking killer tune. And he showed me Jimmy McCard, and I was like, oh, fuck, we should have fucking used that fucking Because me and Scotty actually made a beat with the same sample. And we like, never happened. And then so he shows me Jimmy McCard, and I was like, oh, sick. And he's like, oh, this is the tune. I was like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's pretty cool. Sick. Dope track. He said, do you reckon, do, you know, do you reckon, I reckon this would be one. I was like, oh, I don't know, man. Let's see how it goes. Bang. Just fucking... Yeah, that went through the roof, yeah. man. But I just, I never had a clue on like all that shit. I was just like, I don't know. Yeah, try it. it's sick. <laughs> well, I like, I don't know. I'm the type of dude, I just kind of don't like, I don't tend to gravitate towards the single stuff. Like I'll probably, I mean, I don't know. Fuck, the last fucking American dude I really fucking listened to was Immortal Technique, you know. I kinda, He's dope. I really get into the kind of that shit. And mm. Just, I don't know. Yeah. The the other big single from memory on there was Fallen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now is that there was some That's issue with 
there's Flex. a sample issue like with the original and so that's why Paulie uh, Graf asked me to man I need you to do a remix because I think what he did was put I think what happens he had to re-put the album out yeah I heard it, they had to take it off the shelf yeah and so then that one had the remix on there because I did it I think that's what I did or I don't know I can't remember actually I don't know if you actually put it out with that remix on there. So basically, um, so basically, Brothers Grim drop, it popped. Yeah, those were the two big singles. Yeah, but then Fallen was the one with the sample, yeah, sample issue. Sample issue. So then the record had to get taken off the shelf, and then you remix that joint. Yeah, and the, I remixed that. It was sick because, like, I was like, "Oh yeah, sweet." And then um. I just remixed it because I went to Mumbai and did, we did a downside thing in fucking Mumbai in India. It was sick. And, um, yeah, I went basically record shopping there and just got all this Bollywood shit, this old school Bollywood shit, and that was the set, like the sample. So, you know, they're probably not going to come after us for that. In terms of recently, yeah, uh, you produced Curse's Dead Set 6. Yes, I actually produced some of, yeah, well, some of it, yeah. So tell, tell us how that came about. Because oh. when I I didn't know that, and when yeah, I heard yeah, the, yeah. when I heard when I heard Dead Set Six, your name didn't pop up to mine because of the sound and style. Yeah, well, he was like, "Hey man, like I do, you know, the Dead Set thing." Because with, with the story with Cursor, like I, I um, met him through um, met him through some local boys in Perth. Heard, heard of him, I was like, "Oh, sick," you know, like fucking, I like the kind of grinding, like fucking underground kind of rap shit, um, and um. A lot, um, couple of purple boys like Omac and um, what's his name? Oh, fucking hell! Complete? Ah, uh, no, not complete. Um, I'm trying to think of my homeboy DJs for everyone. Oh, I'm just, just cut this. So I don't look like I fucking forget about him. <laughs> <laughs> um, ah, oh, fuck. Hang on, let me collect my thoughts. It's yeah, that's L Street. All right, okay, and then roll it from here. <laughs> So homeboy L Street, um, who's like another local hip hop DJ, was like, "Bro, got a fucking new quite cursor man, fucking you know, he's fucking sick cunt." It's like, yeah, I know, it's like definitely a sick cunt. That's his thing. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, man, fucking. Um, and then basically, I think that's how it kind of the connect how he was in in Perth. And then I think he needed a DJ for his set. No, no, he actually hit me up for beats. That's right. Sent him a bunch of beats and not too sure what happened. Like it was kind of vibrant, and we I did it was like that studio thing because I'm I I don't know, I don't know why I like that. I like I'm not gonna send you beats or, or a catalog. I'm gonna make them there while you're there. Um, so I did that, and then yeah, and then he sort of hit me up to DJ for him. So I DJ for him when he comes to Perth, and then yeah, and then he just goes, hey man, like I'm doing the new Dead Set. Um, thing or, and I really want a disaster to be on it and I was like yeah cool and I was like and you know like the vibe's kind of that house thing I was like oh okay <laughs> uh, well you know send me the sample what you want me to work with and I'll I'll, I'll try it <laughs> and then that's basically what happened then he was like oh do you mind if other crew like kind of help um, help out with production and stuff I was like yeah man I'm not I'm not um, what's the word precious about it and so there's there's another credit on there that did some some keyboard like house stuff on it. Mm. And so that's how that sort of came about, man. And so where at which point did you first I guess when were you first introduced to Curse's music and what are your thoughts on I guess his music and his movement, so to speak? He man, I've got mad respect for Cursor. And I love all his kind of deep introspective shit. It's fucking killer. Hunter would have fucking would have loved him, man. Like would have fucking loved that shit. Hunter's right into like where I don't know. It's like kind of I don't know. It's I, we kind of tend to gravitate towards more of that style. Mm. But you know we do like our other other stuff. But yeah, um, yeah, his. I will say this, I reckon Cursor, like, is, fuck, he would almost be one, like, almost the biggest hip-hop actor other than the hoods. I don't know, is that? I think at the moment, right now, today, yeah. 
you'd have to you definitely got to put him in the conversation yeah, and man. i think that he is the second name that pops up yeah in mind when you talk about that i mean 60 is big yeah but 60 on my radar at least has been a little bit quiet yeah as of late curses you know trying to put out 10 albums in 10 years he's up to number six and he's on par yeah and you like know? the thing is but the thing is if you go to curses show and you see how fucking fanatic his fans are man like here, here's the thing for you right you serato crowd screams and like it's kind of thing the beat scheme what the fuck fuck it's so fucking loud i go and check the thing the crowd's making you know when you're checking your fucking um how noisy it is the crowd's fucking making that fuck up like that's how fucking loud the crowd is wow that's crazy yeah i saw his gig at hq yeah i think last year yeah and when he come out not only was the crowd wild and my homeboy taps me and I look over, he's just like, yo, look at these chicks. And I was crying. Bro, he's like. Yeah, and I was like, wow, that's some, you know. At that point, I remember thinking, like, once I saw a Curse Alive show, at that point, I remember thinking, whether you like his music or not or what he's about or whatever, go check out his live show. That shit's on some different, like, energy and vibe the energy and he's like the thing is is he's like got mad love for it and it's like it's actually really positive he's got a positive aura man like it's fucking killer and like yeah he's it's sick it's fucking sick yeah <laughs> sick man <as> <laughs> yeah i look forward to seeing him do 10 in 10 yeah man that's crazy yeah, as man. anyone that makes music on any sort of level like that's a lot of work yeah man you know, not yeah. to mention with the tours and whatever else yeah. you might have in between. Yeah. Um, An album that recently dropped that you had credits on, production credits, was the new AB original. Yeah. Which I really dig that shit, man, because yeah. it's got like, I like my West Coast yes, shit. So <laughs> and yeah, and I was just, you know, you can just feel it. You can hear it. Yeah. Um, we played some of it on the radio. I love that, like, you know, there's joints on there with just some heavy drums, eight bars. So as a DJ, you can mix it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And just everything about it, man, is is dope. Now, what what joints did you have production in? Fuck, I'm such a horrible at names. Um, The Feast. Um, hang on, let me fucking double check this because my, my memory is fucked. Um, too Black, Too Strong, is that a track? Yeah, that's yeah. one of the that's one of the singles I think. Yeah, that one. Um, so too black, too strong. Oh, I'm gonna try and do this without looking at it. Hang on. Oh, strong arm, firing squad, strong arm. Hang on, I'll just play. I'm pretty sure it's strong arm. Before you know it, I can't yeah, this one. Um, you know it, okay, okay, okay. okay. Too black, too strong. Call them out. Strong arm, firing squad, the feast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just forgotten already. <laughs> so yeah, so too black, too strong. Call them out, which is secretly called call a mouse. Shout outs to Briggs and Trials. <laughs> uh, the feast. Um, strong arm. I think that's it. Am I right? Am I right? I so think help, so. Help me out here, guys. Maybe Man, I I just know that you had credits on there. I yeah. wasn't I wasn't a hundred percent sure exactly which joints. Yeah, but yeah. I mean the whole album. It's fucking so is, fat. Yeah, January like, twenty six is so fat. Yeah, that was. I think that was the first one I heard. Yeah. Which and was, I think that's the one with um, Sultan on it as well on the hook. And it just like instantly, like it just had that, you know, that bounce to it. Oh. And then the hook comes in with the vocals. Yeah. And I'm like, oh. you know, <laughs> you're just like, damn, <laughs> the fuck is this? Yeah. And the funny thing is, man, is that like when I first heard Australian hip hop would have been, man, I think the first Aussie hip hop joint that really caught my attention was the hoods um, off left foot, right foot, solar to beat. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was living in Flagstaff Hill, yeah. which is like 15 minutes from Blackwood, which is yeah. where they was at, I'm yeah. pretty sure, at the time. And I was like, 
what the fuck? Like, these dudes live, like, down the road. This beat is phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. And I wasn't used to the Australian accent, but the beat was just so hot to me yeah, that yeah, I was yeah. like, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And that's how I got into it. Yeah. But then as I got more and more into it, I was just waiting for that AB Originals without knowing that that's what I was waiting for. Yeah. And yeah. then when it dropped, yeah. I was like, that's the shit I've been waiting for for <laughs> yeah, like yeah. 15 years. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on, I guess, the whole political stance behind their music and what they're sort of pushing? Oh, I'm fucking with them 100%, son. <laughs> yeah, like Australia is illegally founded under mm. Terra Nullius, which is basically claiming that fucking there was no humans here when they, they came, you know, try and colonize or whatever. And... um yeah, basically, it's it's kind of um, yeah. I'm just with them the whole way. Definitely, like a it's. It, I don't know. I I feel like the whole thing with kind of the respect thing. It is a thing of not listening to kind of what crew have to say, and then kind of just dismissing it as ah oh, fucking you know get over it or whatever. It's pretty full on, like. Yeah, it's, it's not an hard. easy thing to get it's over. Not, if if it, if it's a, I think a lot of people don't really put themselves in the shoes shoes of you know those people and and and, and you know listen to them to, to kind of you know you know imagine like also imagine like you know generations of your family have these stories that aren't told in history books and even aren't you know even um even indigenous spokespersons are going out and saying all these stories but then there's all the personal stories that happened from my well my grandmother's well, my great grandmother has this story, you know. She was taken from, like, you know, her, she was taken from her family and just basically doesn't know who her mum and dad is, don't know where her area is, don't know their language. Like, all of that's gone. It's gone. Yeah, man. When you break it down, it seems pretty fucking unbelievable. It's, it's a hard thing to. It's a hard thing to kind of, and then the negative connotations of what's stolen from you just carries on through the generation and then what what if you know that ne negative that negative impact has then gone into the booze or whatever or whatever and then that's passed on to their kids like do you see how hard it'd be to actually just get out of that it's it's really hard i don't think i don't think necessarily like now the system or anything is like kind of racist or anything like that it's still more of people kind of really kind of just having that compassion to kind of listen and it's just getting to a point where now it's like taking AB originals to just get gangster about it on some fucking fat beats. On some G-funk shit. On some fucking G-funk shit. <laughs> what do you think about the whole changing the date of Australia Day? Oh, definitely. More so because of, it's more so because of what it means to, to um, you know, to indigenous crew in terms of like the emotional kind of, I don't know, I'm talking myself into a bloody twist of words here. But yeah, like it, yeah, it's, it, it's definitely, it's an it's emotion, emotional thing to deal with and just kind of that respect. Okay. Yeah. We will change the date because it does mean that we came here like, well, the, the, the English came here and fucking just took everything from you and said you weren't human. Therefore, we can take, by our law, you're not human because we're not going to say you're human because that's how we that's how we conquer land, Terra Nullius. There has to be humans here for us to claim Terra Nullius or we have to wipe all of you out. Yeah, that's fucked up. Yeah. So for them, it's basically like a genocide, mm. you know? Yeah, you can understand why that, you know, the I get, I get, community. And I get the whole Australian thing is fucking awesome. Like, we're all here. We're all immigrants or whatever. Like, that, you know, and we're all kind of living together. And that's great. But, like, we can celebrate on another day, like May the 8th. Mate. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
Now, when when I um when I check like some because Briggs is on TV now, to my understanding, I, I don't I haven't actually caught Briggs an episode. <laughs> yeah, I ain't caught an episode of the of the show, yeah. but I, I like I've been told like yo Briggs is on on telly now on yeah. on a show like co hosting. Yeah, and um you know I see some of the stuff that gets put online, and one of the biggest criticisms I see written down is that they kind of feel that the way Briggs carries himself online with some of the things he says is actually creating more, I guess, division mm. between cultures as opposed to cohesion. Yeah. What do you think? Um, there's always, yeah, it's hard because, <laughs> oh man, I just, I kind of love trolls as well. And, and Briggs is a troll, <laughs> <laughs> but there are other people, there are other trolls out there. Like I think the hardest thing, I guess, I mean, I can't really speak and I can't tell people how to act in that. It's like, you know what I mean? Like, if that's his way of fucking going out there, I'm going to support the brother. Like, do you know what I mean? Because to me, like, you, if you're an immigrant and you come here, you're blessed that you're here and you have to respect whatever history that's gone down the way, the way it is, not the way how you want it to be. Mm. And, and if someone's going to tell you in a harsh way how the history is and how it, it, it really is, then, you know, you can either get pissed off about it and fucking fire back or you can kind of go, okay, hang on, maybe I should think about this and then, you know, make your decision. It's kind of hard to like, you can't tell people how to, yeah, like I, I mean, I, I can go like, oh man, this I reckon will be the best way to go about it. Maybe we should, you've got to be a bit more di diplomatic and thing, but, you know, it's, Briggs, man, he's gonna just do it how he fucking feels like he should tell it. Yeah, and no, fucking, I enjoy it. Yeah, I enjoy it too. I enjoy seeing people actually. Look, well, I enjoy. I mean, that, what I love about Briggs and when I used to go and watch watch his solo sets is like, part of the thing was like he would just fucking crew were just like trying to heckle him and he's just shutting him down like sick. Just yeah, it's entertaining. Reversing the troll and then just like ah oh, yes, you know it's so entertaining. It'd be very interesting to see. I guess with the next record mm. comes out because I'm sure after the way that this one's been received, you know, yeah. they'll be doing number two. And man, I can't imagine, you know, you always try to top your last. Yeah. But if they top that, shit. That's what I'm here for. I'm trying to hook up with T. Get some <laughs> more beats. I'm getting real. I'm getting real on the on the G funk. <laughs> The, the, the lesson. Oh, yeah.